Hello friends and welcome to Turtle Queen Gaming and back to CSI Hard Evidence. Uh, I was just trying to record for a little bit this new episode, uh, In Your Eyes, and apparently everything decided to go horribly wrong because the game closed out, nothing wanted to run, and all my data got corrupted. So I, I saw, I've seen a little bit into this, but we're just going to start over so that you guys can see it as well. Yes. You're proving to be quite a talent. It's been a real pleasure hearing what my CSIs have to say about your work so far. That's why I'm handing you this case. A respected surgeon was brutally killed in his home earlier this evening. We've got only one witness, the victim's wife, a blind woman. Greg will shadow you on this one. Maybe he can learn something from you. I'm also kind of sickly, so if I'm snuffly, I apologize. Gloomy. Hey, thanks for coming aboard. From what I hear, you are the CSI to be partnered with these days. So anyway, welcome to the crime scene. Grizzly murder, Vic upstairs in the bedroom. The decor, early spatter. And his wife, Amita, didn't see a thing, being as she's blind. But we can count on her other senses being keen. So we have to interview her right now, despite her understandable shock. Hey, looks like you got everything under control. I'll see you back at the office. We're sorry to have to trouble you, Mrs. Banderit. We're with the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We understand you found your husband. My, my husband, Riot, he, he was very tired because he worked so very hard. He often went to bed early. Tonight, he went to bed early. What time? I do, actually. It was just before the BBC News Hour on the radio. That would make it around seven. I often stay up to listen. They play international music after the news. That would make it just after 9 p.m. when I went upstairs. I entered the bedroom as always, and as always I spoke to him. He did not sleep deep, and would greet me when I joined him. But he did not answer. Even when I raised my voice, I went to him and found them. The awful moisture. I knew it was blood almost at once. I could smell the blood. I had some moments of panic and then I went to the phone and called 911, but I knew it was too late. His breathing, I could not hear it. Yes, I am blind in both the practical and legal sense. How well do you see? I have basic light and dark sensitivity. I cannot see objects or shapes, so I must rely on my hearing. My ears have become my eyes. No, no, my ears were as blind to it as my eyes. You see, I do not, did not, like to disturb my husband. As I said, he was a light sleeper when he could get sleep at all, so I use headphones after he goes to bed. I did faintly detect footsteps on the stairs, but I thought those were my husband's. He would often come down for a drink of water, or perhaps to take sleep medication. I surely must have. I cannot be specific. I was almost immediately in a panic, and my memory is but a blur. Your clothing shows no overt signs of bloodstain, Mrs. Banderit. I do apologize for that. I know I have probably inadvertently hurt your evidence gathering, but I felt compelled to change, to wash my hands so as not to sit and wait in my husband's blood. I do have the clothing for you. Blood transfer fairly minimal on these clothes, consistent with her interview. Let's take a look at the scene. Oh, I believe my doggie wants out. Bummer for her. 
Dead or alive, I don't like touching insects. Grab it if you want. Grissom will appreciate it. Bug. 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 Curtis boy. And Older this. style answering machine. Tape's missing. I guess they weren't getting their messages. Fairly small print. If it's the attackers, we may be looking for a female. Bloody fireplace poker. And my usage isn't British. Probably an impromptu weapon picked up here at the house. See, that joke was really funny to me the first time. The fourth time, not so funny. You know the saying, looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, must be a duck? Don't try that one out on Grissom. Looks like tea, smells like tea, analyze it anyway. Height of the bloodstain indicates the attacker was short. Five foot three, give or take. Definitely not a former NBA star. That is a very tiny woman. Back this way. This way. Massive bleeding from the head, spatter all around. Indicates blunt force trauma. God, there's a hole in that man's head. This blood looks so different on the ceiling. Ceiling spatter is consistent with the blunt force object being swung back for another hard blow. I cannot be sure. Pryot usually locks up before going to bed, but as I say, he was especially tired. Perhaps he forgot. Such things were the province of my husband. She does not concern herself with the answering machine. Such a thought is unthinkable. Pryot was a shining star in the Indian community. Well liked by his peers. Adored by his patients. He leaves a terrible void. It varies according to the brand. Typically I wear a woman's size 8. Mrs. Bandery, may we take your slippers for comparison purposes? We found a footprint on the stairs, and if it's not yours, it might belong to an intruder. You know I will do anything in my power to find the demon responsible. This doesn't look like anything from inside the house. I think that's it. So far that I'd found. Pretty sure. Denise. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Broke everything. Poker. Vic's blood on the fireplace poker. An object consistent with the ceiling's back spatter. 
Good bet we have our murder weapon. Ta-da! Oh yes, and this teacup. This and this. I'm missing a piece of the puzzle here. And the crime scene didn't give it up. Of course, the teacup could have been already chipped. That's not a chip, that's a hole. <laughs> you wouldn't be pouring teen shit in it. Who's got tea and sleeping pills? Asphalt. Sticky bun fresh, too. Banderites are in a new housing development, newly paved roads, so there's the source. Asphalt's on top of the blood stain, meaning the slipper picked it up after stepping in blood. See, I didn't see the blood stain, but whatever. I searched those, they didn't match anything. They do, however, match the slippers. Can't rule out the missus, not just yet. She cops to being in the house all along. Not only that, a blind person knows his or her house better than a sighted occupant. And I'm pretty sure that's where I left off. Yep, yep, yep. Aha. I, there had to be something. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. This came from inside the house. Nice catch. Let's see if we can flush out who drew a club in their poker hand. Oh. I might be missing something. I guess until I find the chip, this isn't going to be done. So we'll just take that. Bloop, bloop, bloop. That was easy. Print belongs to another eye surgeon, a Darsh Dewan, on visa sponsored by the Vic for his medical practice. No current address, though. Hmm, weird. You don't just grab a fire poker willy nilly, especially in someone else's house. I don't believe that I... Let me think. It was such a confused... Confusing evening. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, perhaps I did step outside. Mrs. Banderit, fresh asphalt on your slippers indicates you wore them outdoors. Isn't that a little unusual? In the cold light of reason, yes. But I was caught in the throes of panic, thinking an intruder might be in the house. I ran outside on impulse without any sense of my bearings. I did manage to find my way back home and after several minutes listening, 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 felt I could risk going back and phone for help. I'm sorry I did not remember this sooner. That's all right. But my partner and I will need to have a look around outside. Adarsh is, was my 
husband's junior partner at the medical practice. Very fond of him, Prayat was. Adarsh's parents were old family friends of Prayat's in India. Prayat sponsored his visa so he could come here and work. Where is Mr. Dewan now? We have no address on him. Odd as it may seem, neither do I. Mr. Dewan was in the process of finding a home. I believe he was living temporarily with friends, but I'm afraid I don't know where. I believe my husband mentioned Adarsh had purchased a truck. I don't remember any special model or... What is the word? Make of the vehicle. And of course, I have not seen it for myself. Okay, 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 fair enough. I guess we better put out an APB for a da da dar. Can I do that? Uh. That's an easy one. Give me a sec to look it up. Vic had a legal prescription for the medication, strictly kosher. Cool. Hmm, no current address for Dwan in the system. No vehicle registered in his name, either. I'll let the boys know Mr. Dwan is a person of interest, but he may well have split if he's involved. Thank you. That's all I needed. Overly dramatic. Love you. What a cute little cul de sac. This is, but I'm gonna take it. Somebody was in too much of a hurry to use their eyes backing out. Oh, it's a tail light. Is that it? I, I guess so. Some wow, like they crashed everywhere. Ran right over the mailbox. Uh. Broken tail light, a fresh tread. Car backed up, bumped into the dumpster, then went up and over the curb and sped away. Random blood. Mrs. Banderit says she went outside, and these droplets are consistent with what she told us. Make that what she finally told us. That music got, like, intense. Jeez. That's gotta be it. Sure. A bug. I got a bug. I got a bug. I got a bug. Hey, 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 hey. I can't think of anything I haven't told you already. Oh, damn. All right. Then I fucked up already. I'm missing something. Snuffle. Anything? Huzzah! Tires. Wow, lots of tires. Oh. Is that... It looks right. Excellent. There's our make and model. Oh, that's a Chrysler town and country. Okay. 
Damn it. I don't know why I have to... Oh. Why can't I rotate? I don't understand. Hmm. That's right. Uh, apparently it's wrong. Why? What am I doing? Why am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Kinda looks right. I don't get it. What's the point? See? Cause that looks right, right? But it's not sticking. Like you would expect it would. Obviously, I'm not probably not supposed to even be doing messing with this. Probably not. Stop it! Okay, pointless, whatever, waste of time. Press, we have a thingy. It's a Chrysler. Once you got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. Damn it! Don't tell me I'm lost already. I probably am. Bad. Bad killer. Hmm. Oh, what's this? Uh, a thoroughness point. Pointless. Way to be thorough. Looks like the area's clean. Blood Mailbox Pointless door What am I missing? Took a look around outside already. Uh, 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 oh. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, hey. Nothing. Hmm, what am I missing? I don't know what I'm missing. I'm a dork. We have a body. Dead person. Sure, I'll send a team right out.
Textbook case of death by forceful blunt instrument impact. Four medium impact blows, latter two drawing blood. Heavy dose in the Vic system, explaining the lack of defensive wounds on his arms and hands. Mr. Banderit was in a deep sleep that simply became permanent. Now the marks are consistent. The fire poker is almost certainly your murder weapon. Looks like the two of you are off to a good start. Learning anything from your partner? We're too busy actually investigating a case to figure out which one of us you are referring to. So, to fill you in, we've discovered a print belonging to the former eye doctor's business partner on the murder weapon. According to the wife, he drives a truck, and we found a tire tread at the scene, along with broken taillight fragments. So you have a suspect, and a reasonable description of his vehicle. Have you hit up brass for an APB yet? We were just on our way over there. Tell you what, since you two are doing such a fantastic job with the evidence, why don't you keep at it? I'll talk to Brass and have him call you when he gets a hit on your missing vehicle. Yay! I feel like there was more here. Though he might I've be... got nothing new to report yeah. on the Vic. Nothing. Okay, that's it. Just making sure. Press, press. You have to call us soon. Soon. Ah, I have no idea. I'm missing something already. It's probably a little bitty thing. Brass really needs to get back to us. Oh, garbage. What? Were those trash cans there before? Or am I having eyesight trouble? Yeah. That's... what? What? Well, there's an obvious tape. Which I'll be taking. Tiny tape like this, likely from an answering machine. Tape snapped, but that's no problem. Huh. Random. Maybe things at the Banderit house were not as perfect as Mrs. Banderit wanted us to believe. Uh huh. Bad dog. A rope? I. I should have mentioned that. I just did not want you to misunderstand, to think my daughter. She has always been an excitable girl. She overreacts. I, I wanted to spare my husband of that melodrama, so I cut the tape and threw it away, and told Priya the tape had broken. 
Is any marriage perfect? Whatever small problems there might be, my marriage was sacred to me. And Briot's word, his will, I obeyed with love in my heart. My daughter was raised in this country and does not understand. That's a shame. I'm really sorry about that. Why, she lives right across the street. She is a wonderful daughter at heart. She welcomes me into her beautiful kitchen for lunch every day. See, your mom knows what's up. It's about time you people came around. I've been on the phone all night trying to get some answers from the police. Have you found my father's killer? No, Ms. Banderit. We're with the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We've come across an answering machine tape of you begging your mother to leave your father. What threat were you afraid your father might make good? It wasn't like that. Not a threat of violence. My... My father was pushing me into marrying a man I do not love. The threat was to cut me off from my mother if I didn't do his old school bidding. Some choice, huh? Marry a man I detest, or never see my own mother again. Oh. You don't love him? Have you even got- Do you know who the hell he is? Have you even given him a chance? Your father probably knows what the hell's up. You're bad at this. His business partner? A disgusting little creature called a Darsh Daiwan. I work with the creep at my father's practice. Manipulating little weasel. Playing off an old friendship between our families to worm his way into my father's good graces. Finally, I learned Adarsh was nothing more than a common thief. Stealing from our family. Oh. I told him, resign or face exposure. But he laughed me off. He said he could handle my stupid father. Never thought he meant murder. Oh, rude. Yes, credit card fraud. Using my father's Visa card to be precise. A snake. Right behind our backs. My father told me that Visa noticed suspicious activity and alerted him right away. I don't know if he suspected Adarsh, but I did. And I found proof in his apartment. Awkward pause. Yes! I won't have you wasting precious time here when you could be rounding up that little rat Adarsh. Actually, it won't take but a moment to collect that footprint by the door. Or we could wait here till we get a warrant. If that's what will get you out of here faster, take the footprint and take off. Hey, Brass! Grissom you find put us me out a of that buddy? runway Doc you're looking for. Well, when a black and white hit the siren over that busted tail, Doc Dewan got nervous and hit the gas. Chase hardly started before he stripped the curb and got pulled over. Hey, the doctor dumbass. is currently in custody as a person of interest. You can talk to this charmer anytime you like. Just stop by my office. Got his truck, too. <laughs> what a dumbass. All right. He's on his way to interrogation now. I'll worry about his car after I'm done with this. Dr. Pradyut Banderit was found murdered in his home earlier this evening. Murdered? No, he was my dearest friend. He was to be my father-in-law. Oh my goodness gracious, such a terrible thing to have happened. Are you certain? Could I'm... there be, I hope, some horrible mistake? Pretty sure he's still dead. Let me try to think. I believe I was in my office. Yes, I worked late in the office. I'm catching up on my paperwork, you know. I left around 9 p.m. on my way to Los Angeles to visit friends for the weekend. Oh my goodness gracious, yes. All has been arranged between the families. I'm to marry Dr. Bandarit's most wonderful daughter, Adya. We are both excited to begin our new lives as Mr. and Mrs. Dewan. Adya's excited, all right, but because her daddy was pushing her into this arranged marriage and threatening to separate her from her mother if she didn't cave. It's a big leap we make together, and of course she has small moments of doubt. 
but the day will soon dawn when my dear Adya will acknowledge her father's wishes and understand my sincere deep affections. And your car was at the scene, Doctor. Maybe he knew about your stealing and didn't find it so trivial. You have such a negative view of such innocent things. We were in the Bandarit's living room when the good doctor informed his lovely wife that I would soon marry their daughter. We celebrated over tea and Mrs. Bandarit requested a fire. At this time, I handled the poker to which you refer. Okay. Kind of silly. A bug! I saw it. Damn, the tire we needed for comparison got shredded in the police chase. And we got no warrant to search the interior. We need some other way to tie the truck to the crime scene. Uh, the broken taillight? First, I'm taking this bug. This way. There we go. Cool. I got this. Uh oh. Oh, those dogs are silly. What am I doing? There. Nothing. All right. Ah, blah, 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 blah. All right, we placed the truck out in front of the Vic's place without the tire track evidence. Good. Busted light ties the truck to the street in front of the Vic's residence. That key unlocks the truck for a look-see. Huzzah! We have a late model vehicle here. Practically brand new. Still, I'd say Adar spruced up the interior. Cleaned, vacuumed it. Everything but the new car smell. So this is the memo Aji wrote. Break in, the next war in Brassel issue will be on us. Let's see what else we can find. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that I'm s the word is to get in anywhere. That poor tire. That's got to be it for now.
Nope. No. This. These are emails confirming online purchases at Darshmade using the card. Email confirmations are normally sent by merchants as a safety precaution, but Adarsh had access to their computer, and he snagged them to cover his actions. I'll have Brass check in with Visa. Shameful, Adar. I called Visa, good folks over there, and they said Visa's continuous monitoring program detected suspicious activity. Mr. Dwan was changing the shipping address, sending items to his home and back to India, not your model employee. Hmm. He's on his way to interrogation now. See, the guy's are, like gonna let you marry his daughter and shit, and you decide to steal from him. Dumbass. This should be no surprise. Do I not visit on occasion the home of my esteemed employer, my future father-in-law? You use such harsh language to describe the smallest of misunderstandings. I am new to your country, and the laws and procedures here are unlike those in India. I plan to rectify the smallest of errors upon my return from Los Angeles. What? <laughs> Using his card without permission, I'm pretty sure that's still illegal in India. What memo? The one from Adya, your bride-to-be, threatening to let her daddy know you'd been stealing. Again, I, I must point out that what may look to you like stealing is a mere misunderstanding. My sweet and lovely Adya has the tiny fault of getting largely excited over the smallest of matters. As I say, I would have corrected these trivial mistakes. I take perhaps foolish pride in the luxury vehicle I'm blessed to drive. I'm meticulous in my, what's the word, upkeep. I keep it up, I keep it clean. I bought a portable vacuum to help in this crusade of cleanliness. Oh, let me think. I believe in my toolbox. Mind if we take a look? We'll need your keys. I'm honored to help you in your investigation. Thanks, I'll hold on to him. All right. That's simple enough. Okay, I have unlocked the toolbox, but didn't find any tools. Just cleaning supplies. My goodness gracious, but Dr. Dewan is neat. <laughs> My goodness gracious. We can work with that on the assembly table. Ah. Is that it? Must be. Okay. Assembly table. Goodness gracious. Pew. 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 A piece of wood. A penny. A screw. And a piece of the teacup. This little baby may mean we're now the proud owners of a complete teacup. Better confirm in the lab. Chip from Dr. Dewan's vacuum cleaner is a perfect match for the teacup found at the crime scene. Let's see him squirm politely out of this one. <laughs> hey, what's up? He's on his way to interrogation now.
I sincerely doubt this is true. Surely this is a terrible misunderstanding. Here's what we understand. A porcelain chip from a teacup in your vacuum matches a broken cup at the murder scene. We've got you covering up fraud, your fingerprint on the murder weapon, and your vehicle at the crime scene. It doesn't take 20-20 vision to bring you into focus as a suspect, Dr. Duan. Uh, that's because he's an eye doctor. Blah. Oh my goodness gracious, this does look terribly bad. But I'm an innocent party in this guilty matter. I did not kill my good friend and colleague. You're right, it does look terribly bad. Please, listen. I'm new in this country. It takes much funds to start living in a new place. My colleague's daughter, she finds out in some devious fashion. She threatens to tell the good doctor unless I quit and run away. How could I consider this? I had agreed to marry the doctor's daughter. My family would be disgraced, would be devastated. So I drive to his house last night to bear my soul and to beg for forgiveness. The door I find open. No one answers my call. So I go inside. But something, it doesn't feel right in the air, something forbidding. Still, I go up the stairs to the bedroom. And then I saw him, my benefactor, my friend, dead. I knew at once I will be the suspect. I panic and flee in my vehicle fast as I can. That's stupid. <laughs> that. <laughs> Do you not listen? Am I speaking to the ears of the deaf? I helped Mrs. Bandarit make a fire in her living room. I know her daughter. She never wanted to marry me, but her parents, they are delighted to make this traditional arrangement. It was Adya who objected. It is Adya to whom you should speak. Adya? She was angry with her father. Yesterday, they had an argument at the office. I did not hear all that was said, but it did have to do with her mother, with something Dr. Bandarit did to or with Adya's mother. Thanks for the information, but you'll need to remain our guest while we check out your story. No more last minute trips out of town, doctor. Okay. Well, the plot thickens. It, of course, would have been way too easy if he was the one who killed the good doctor. <sighs> she, somebody should have just done what she was supposed to, and everything would have worked out the way it was supposed to. Silly girl, thinking she could marry for love. I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> All right. Well, we will continue this in the next episode, so until next time, peace out, y'all.